Okay, here's another video for the uh, 3U math course uh, using a little different software right now. See how this goes. Um, so we're going to be graphing different tables of values, and this goes with your assignment for this section of the course. And let's start with linear equations first. You know that an equation is linear when it has uh, this form here, y equals mx plus b, or, or any form where x is to the power of 1. So anything like this, where you have uh, not squared, not cubed, or that sort of thing, you know that you can have a linear equation which makes a line. So how do you know what this looks like? Well, three different ways to deal with lines. One is just to sub in using a table of values. So you'll just go, and I'll do it for the first one here. We have y equals 2x minus 5, and we're going to sub in various values of 0, or of x, sorry, the first one being 0, into the equation and find out what the corresponding um, y value will be. So I go through this and I get 0, it goes with negative 5. And if I do, sub in 1 in here, I'll get negative 3. And if I sub in 2 in here, I uh, will get negative 1. And when I plot the points, now excuse these, um, these uh, graphs here. They didn't come out that well. Um, but uh, let's plot these points. 0, negative 5. So I move over 0. And then I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. The next one was 1, negative 3. So I'm over here. And the last one is 2, negative 1. And the nice thing is if you put these points in here, you only need two points to graph a line. Um, but if you have three points, what you can do is make sure that you connect the first two points with your line, and then hopefully it goes through your third point. And if you do that, then you haven't made a mistake. Okay, so that's using a table of values. The next uh, example or the next uh, way to graph is to use the slope and the y-intercept. So this is in y equals mx plus b form. So y is equal to negative one-half x plus three. b is your y-intercept here and m is your slope and if you remember that m uh, being a slope of negative slope means that it, the graph goes down okay and we read lines left to right like we read any other line or any other graph so this is a negative slope this is a positive slope so back to the first question i had a slope of two and i'm going this way and that looks about right so i want to graph this y is equal to negative one half x plus three and what i do is i plot my y-intercept at one two three and then I just use my slope, my rise over run to plot the next point. So the next point is one half over. So that means that I go down here. When you have a fraction, usually if it's a whole number, if I let's say I had negative six was my slope, I'd go over one down six. Okay. So that would, I plot that point down here because it's negative. But here, because it's a negative half, it's a fraction. What I'm going to do is go over two down one. The half, you should know that a half is going to be fairly flat. And it's going to be less uh, steep than something that has a slope of 1. So this is negative half. So it goes down and it goes like this. So I go over 2, over 2, down 1. And if I had negative 6, I'd go over 1, because negative 6 is the same as negative 6 over 1. Over 1, down 6. Okay, that would be a steeper negative slope. So that's that way. The third way is to find the intercepts the x and y intercepts. And usually we do this when, when uh, we don't have y equals mx plus b form. So you have ax plus, uh, AX plus b, b, y is equal to c form, something like this, where you have 2x minus 3y is equal to 6. What you do is you sub in x, uh, 0 for x, to find out the y intercept, and you sub in 0 for y to find the x intercept. So you write it like this, 2 times 0 minus 3y is equal to 6, and you solve for y, so you get minus 3y is 6. And here y is equal to negative 2. So you divide by both sides by negative 3. So I have 0, negative 2. That's my one point. So I go 0, negative 2. That's my y-intercept. My other point, I'll just use my eraser here because I kind of ran out of room. Clean this guy up. And let's go back here. And now I'm going to sub in x. Uh, sorry. I'm going to leave x as is, and I'm going to sub in um, 0 for y. So this goes like this, and I'm going to solve for x, and that's 0, so 2x is equal to 6, and x is in fact 3. So I plot, put 3 in there, and I plot the point 3, 1, 2, 3, 0, two points, connect the dots, and I'm laughing. Well, just make bigger dots, and I don't know. Okay, so those are that's linear, and that's old stuff, and now we're going to go on to quadratics, and this is old also, some of it is at least. So we're going to move on to quadratics real quick. A couple ways to to graph quadratics. Quadratic has something squared in it, x squared or a bracket with an x in it, which is squared. And what you do here is you get your h and k, which is your vertex, and then you use a step pattern. So the vertex here, don't forget that it's this 
form, uh, also known as P and Q, okay? So sometimes that's P and Q, but H and K I'll use here. What you do is you get your vertex, and what you're going to do here is change your sign on the H and leave your K. So here I have negative 3 and negative 4, so my H and K here is 3, negative 4. So I go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, I plot my vertex. This guy opens up because it, there's a, no negative here, or there's a positive in front here. And my set pattern here, it's always A times 1, 3, 5. 1, 3, 5 is my regular step pattern. And because there's no number here, it's really a 1, it's, my step pattern will be 1 times 1, 3, 5, which is just uh, 1, 3, 5. So I go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, and that's enough points. And then I draw the mirrored points on the other side, connect the dots, and I'm done. Okay, there's my problem there. Okay, so find your H and K, take it right out. Okay, and here, for example, H, I don't see anything in the brackets, so my H is 0, and my K is negative 9. Right, so if I have this one, 0, negative 9, so that's 0, and then negative 9 is down here. Now if I want to find my step pattern, it's 3 times 1, 3, 5, which is 3, 9, 15. I don't really need the 15, but then I go over 1, up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, wherever that is up here. And then I do the mirrored points on the other side. Because don't forget that the parabolas are symmetrical. Connect the dots like this, and I'm done. Okay, so that's how you graph with vertice, uh, vertex and the step pattern, which is a really great way to do it if you can. If you can't, you might have to do something like this, where you find the zeros. So this form here, I'm going to go from standard form to uh, what we call uh, factored form. So I'm going to factor this guy here. I have two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 2. So I say to myself, I know that that's a plus and a minus, and the bigger the 2 is the plus, and only numbers that multiply to 3 are 3 and 1, so it's got to be 3 and negative 1. And does that, does that work? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 1 is 2. Yeah, it does work. So then I say to myself, what are my zeros? Well, I set this equation equal to 0, so same thing. And then I solve each of these, or I just change the signs of what's in the bracket. So I can solve each of these, and my zeros are negative 3 and 1. So when is this equal to 0? Either this guy is 0 or this guy is 0. This is 0 if x is negative 3. This is 0 if x is 1. So those are my zeros. So my zeros are negative 3, which are 1, 2, negative 3, and 1. Now I know this guy opens up because it's a positive a, but I don't know where. But I do use the symmetry here to find out that my vertex is somewhere down here. It's got to be between these two points. I don't know where between the two points. Well, it's in the middle of these two points, sorry. I don't know where up and down, but I do know that it's in between. So what I do is I take my zeros, I add them together, and I divide by 2 to find the average of, of the two zero points. And in this case, that's negative 3 plus 1, which is uh, negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 1. So I know that my h value is negative 1. Okay, I know it's here. But what's my k value? What's my horizontal, uh, 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 sorry, vertical part of the of the vertex, I need to sub h back in here. So I can either sub it into the factored form or I can sub it into the original form. It's easy, easier in the factored form, but I'll, I'll do it here. That's negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. So that's 1 minus 2 minus 3, which is what? Minus 5 minus 4? Is that right? So minus 4. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I ask myself, does this make sense with the step pattern? Well, I can run through the step pattern. My step pattern is 1, 3, 5, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3. Yeah, it does. So then I go like this, and I'm done. Okay? Find your, your zeros. Find the middle. That's where the vertex is on the h on the x uh, coordinates, or my h value. Sub it in to find out what k is, plot your points, and then check with the step pattern. Does it make sense? Finally, a lot of work here, guys. So don't worry, if I'm whipping through it, just rewind it, and, and uh, it also works to put people to sleep, uh, this, these great videos. So y is equal to this, and what I'm going to do here is something called partial factoring. So I, I'm not going to find the zeros, I'm going to find, I'm going to know something about this. Okay, This is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and if you remember, c is your y-intercept. So every parabola is going to have a y-intercept, there's no way around that. So here's, I'm just going to draw a parabola. Here's my y-intercept. But the nice thing about mirrored, the mirrored part of the parabola is that I know that this value is something, and I know it's a y-intercept, but there's also a point right across that is equally as high as this point. And if I can find this point and this point, then I can go back and find the vertex in the middle of the two. And that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is something called partial factoring, and I'm going to common factor the first two terms here. 
so what I have here is I'm going to factor 3x squared minus 6x, which is 3x. I can take 3x out. I'm left with x minus 2. And then I still have the plus 3. So then I want to figure out when is y equal to 3. Well, I know that it's equal to 3 when x is equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0, then I have 0 times something plus 3, which is 0 plus 3. And that gets me my 1 point. So I know my 1 point is when x is equal to 0. But I also know that my other point is when this is equal to 0, this x minus 2 factor. So what I do is I set that equal to 0, so x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x is equal to 2. So I know that my y value is 3 at x equal to 0, so 1, 2, 3. And I also know that it's 3 when x is equal to 2. So that's over to 1, 2. And in this case, it's not going to take much imagination to figure out where the vertex is. Well, the vertex has to be at 1. But let me just go through the process anyway. You take your two points, divide by 2. So there's the whole format. And I get 1. And that's my h. And then I sub to find k. So sub to find k. And I can go to any version of the equation. I'll go to the original. So I go 3 times 1, all squared, minus 6 times 1. Not all squared. Squared plus 3. I'm running out of room here. That's 3 minus 6. Uh, 3 minus 6 plus 3, which is what? Uh, 0. So then my vertex should be right here. Okay, my vertex, then my k value is 0. So my vertex, my hk, is equal to 1, 0. And let's just see if that makes sense. If, if I'm at here and I'm going to go up, then I'm going over 1, up 3. So my first step pattern should be 3. And does that make sense? Well, my step pattern is determined by a times 1, 3, 5. So my first step is going to be 3 times 1, 3, 5. So my first step is 3 times 1, which is 3. So yeah, that does make sense. I'm going over 1, up 3. Okay. Hopefully your graphs are a little nicer than mine. So hopefully that made sense. A little confusing, maybe. A lot of work there. Any questions, come and talk to me. Take care.